Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my brother, Cowboy Joe Blue, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get over here and let's wait for the football gods here. And it's early, <clears throat> a few minutes after 6 a.m. I have to get my morning video out before I hit the road down here and get this place ready we have first of november and we must be ready for them deadlines end up making what is the can't remember the saying must be because i'm up too early this morning so interesting night last night um we did our regular live stream carson wentz and the colts the one in three carson wentz and colts were up 25 to 9 against the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar Jackson fumbled on the one-yard line and ended up going all the way back uh, for a touchdown. The Colts seemed to have it wrapped up. But then Lamar Jackson ended up having the biggest comeback of his career. Um, They came back and tied it up. The numbers are staggering for Lamar Jackson last night. The knock on Lamar Jackson is he's just a running quarterback running quarterback, <clears throat> excuse me, but not a passer. Well, last night, he had 86% completions, 86% an NFL record, was 37 of 43 for 442 yards, a career high for him, four TDs and zero interceptions, with 62 yards rushing. He was responsible for over 500 yards by himself. And again, I don't know what's happened to kickers this year. Kickers stink. And the Colts stink. I'm beginning to think that Carson Wentz, who, you know, kind of like a leprechaun, is really just like the anti-leprechaun. Because the Colts are now one in four. They were... A really good team last year with Phillip Rivers. With Carson Wentz at the helm? Wow. <clears throat> to think that people used to say that Carson Wentz is better than Dak Prescott. Wow. Wow. Just amazing. Just 100% amazing. Then we heard about John Gruden um, stepping down that there were a lot more emails that were a lot more recent than 10 years ago of some of his attitudes, and he ended up falling on the sword, so to speak, on his emails and stuff. So he is now out um, as the head coach of the Raiders. But quite frankly, the Raiders have been a disappointment. Last year, they started out promising and had a – epic collapse uh, for the season. And in the four years that he's been there, has yet to have a winning season. It seems like John Gruden's philosophies were the same philosophies he had back when 2002 or 2001 when they won the Super Bowl, that they really didn't evolve and it seemed like time had left him behind. And it seems like time has left him behind again. So now, our Cowboys are off, of course, today. They get back on the practice field tomorrow. Fortunately, um, no new injuries were reported for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Today is the day that the rankings come out. And this will be interesting to see where they have the Cowboys right now. And I'm just wondering, in your mind, where are the Dallas Cowboys in the hierarchy of the NFL right now? I'm not sure about the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens, they're cardiac kids. They seem to keep coming from behind and winning. It seems like they're always playing in prime time. They're a really good team, but I look at the Ravens and think that the Ravens should have been blown out Carson Wentz and crew because I think of the Ravens as a much better team than the Colts. It seemed like they were playing down to their level. Yeah, they kind of toyed with them. They came back and they won. So I'm not sure exactly where they are. <clears throat> in 
the AFC, you have to pretty much look at Buffalo and say Buffalo is probably the best team. I know nobody wants to give up on Kansas City that they still are living on the reputation of being the Super Bowl the last two years. And we'll still have them in the top 10. But I'm not sure that they deserve to be there in the top 10. Now, maybe this weekend when they go to FedEx Field, you know, the slump busters that they'll come through, blow doors, and, and wow us again and get back to 500. So we'll see where they are. The rest of the AFC is kind of a hodgepodge mix. The NFC is where all the teams seem to be really there. Tampa Bay, of course, is on a roll. Tampa Bay only has one loss on their, their resume. Tampa Bay beat us 31-29 in the season opener. They have Tom Brady, the GOAT. Their defense is great at stopping the run, but they're suspect against the pass. They're still, you have to say, the best team in the NFC. I think the Cardinals... The Cardinals are the enigma that I'm really not sure. Kyler Murray has been great. Kyler Murray has been handling business in their division. Um, But it's just something in the back of my head. I guess in the same way that people don't want to rate the Cowboys very high, in the same way, I'm not sure I'm ready to rate the Cardinals there either. I just feel like there's a shoot about to drop with the Cardinals, that they're maybe not as good as we think that they are. But that's just me. Green Bay. Hmm. The Green Bay Packers. They got destroyed by the Saints opening week. And you looked at that and it was like, ooh. The Saints, on the other hand, since that time, have been kind of up and down and mostly kind of down. Jameis Winston who looked like a world beater that week, looked like shameless Jameis um, this past week, tossing a couple interceptions, and trying to give the game to the Washington football team that just wouldn't take it. Um, So the Packers go toe-to-toe with Cincinnati and beat them by two. And I'm still not sure about Cincinnati. They're three and two, definitely an improved team. But should Green Bay lose to the Saints and then struggle against the Bengals? I'm not sure. And then there's the Cowboys. <clears throat> Four and one. I'm a homer. Uh, let's be clear. I'm a homer. The Cowboys. I'm not going to say they're number one. I'm not that much of a homer. When you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best, and we didn't beat Tampa Bay. And we'll get an opportunity with the Cardinals. The thing about the Cowboys that you look at is not so much where they are right now, but where will they be down the road. A lot of teams have had catastrophic injuries and losses. Cowboys have had theirs as well. Demarcus Lawrence, Dorrance Armstrong, Michael Gallup. On most teams, if you had players losing that many players um, to injury, not to mention the early COVID cases, it probably would have been, you know, season killing. But the team seems to have depth. And I think that that's going to be the thing that's really going to carry them far. When they start getting back these players, and the Val Gallimores, the Donovan Wilsons, the Demarcus Lawrence, the Michael Gallups, um, these players, uh, the Tristan Hills, they will have not only, and, and don't lose other ones, that's the key, if they continue to keep the players healthy. This is two weeks in a row that no no new injuries. They will be able to outlast just about anybody. So from that standpoint, and also when you think about Dan Quinn's defense, the defense should get better as the season goes on as they learn more of the subtleties of what Dan Quinn's 
defense is. From that standpoint, and as I look at the schedule, the Cowboys, wow, this is almost insane. I don't know that there's anybody on your schedule that you say, oh, we can't beat them anymore. We have New England with Matt Jones, who has five interceptions in the last two games. Rookie. Now, playing in Foxborough is tough. You've got the Vikings. Kirk Cousins. Yeah, after a bye week. The Broncos. The Falcons. The Chiefs. They could have could, could easily turn things around by then. But I'm not as scared of the Chiefs right now as I was in the beginning of the year. The Raiders in disarray now with John Gruden being fired. The Saints. Washington, the Giants, Washington, the Cardinals on uh, January 2nd, and finish up with the Eagles. Bro. I don't want to get overconfident because when you do, that's when things come to slap you in the face. But right now, you should be feeling pretty good about the Cowboys. The Cowboys and every poll should be in the top five. If they're not, they're just a straight hater. Let's put it that way. Bill Belichick. <clears throat> There's a lot of things that Dallas does well, Bill Belichick, Belichick said, just like there are a lot of things Tampa Bay does well, just like there are a lot of things that Houston does well. What? So you totally have to prepare for each team and defend those players that they have out there and schemes that they run. But I don't think anybody will see anybody better than Tom Brady, Belichick said. But Dak does some things that Tom Brady doesn't do. Tom does some things that Dak doesn't do. The skill sets are different. The lines are different. So it's really about defending the team, not just one person. <clears throat> Although you're aware, you're aware of defending individual player skills. In other words, he's saying, Little old Dak is pretty good. All right, y'all. I will be on the road. Um, Got to go take care of my day job. But I will keep you up to date as best I can till I get back home tonight um, with everything that is the Dallas Cowboys. And you know how we roll. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the show for the sports report. <laughs> And all the thing else I got to say is, how about you, Joe? How about you, Joe?